but I just checked the nest and there's the little babies. Today's Friday, what is the date, like May 22nd, something like that, and today is the only day in the forecast that we don't have thunderstorms predicted, so I feel like it's kind of crunch time to get the rest of the garden in. I'm also going to do a lot of weeding, or the rest of the weeding, um, because rain is really good for your plants, like you notice a lot of growth after rain but it also in the weeds so I got this landscape fabric to cover those beds that were tilled and we're gonna plant right into that and that will take care of a, a majority of the weeds for the rest of the season. So that's nice, that's a relief. So we have it over by the squash. And you can do this with things that you just plant once and it stays there the rest of the season, like squash. So I planted these sad sunflowers yesterday. They needed it bad. Look at how spindly they got waiting for me in their pots. I'm hoping they straighten out <laughs> uh, once they get established. I'm gonna try something new this year and plant my herbs in between my tomato plants. They're, this is called interplanting and there's supposedly a few benefits to this. One being saving space. I don't really need to do that. I have plant more space than I know what to do with in this garden, but if you had a small garden, you can plant short, low growing, crops in between crops that grow tall and need a lot of space like tomatoes and I'm going to be pruning my tomatoes so they're not going to, I'm going to prune the growth close to the ground to prevent um, another thing that I do to prevent disease so there's going to be a lot of space around the ground where the tomatoes are planting and you know from my last video that they're three feet apart there's three feet of space in between each tomato plant the other benefit is to is for pests and disease. So the theory is that planting different crops together attracts different types of insects and, and diseases to kind of balance each other out. So like predator insects will come and eat pests if you plant certain plants that attract certain kinds of insects that eat other insects. Um, the other benefit would be less space that's open for weeds. So. My tomato plants are three feet apart. That's a lot of space, and I'm gonna be pruning them so they grow mostly up, and I'm gonna trellis, prune and trellis them so they grow mostly up, so there's gonna be a lot of ground space that's open, and I would either have to mulch that, which I usually do, or grow something there so that it just doesn't fill up with weeds, or I could just keep weeding, or let it grow up in weeds. So that's a few of the reasons why I'm, I'm trying this and I think it'll be cute. Of course, as soon as I go to start recording, the, the neighbors decide to use their leaf blower and the construction crew next door that's working on that burnt house, they decide to start for the day too. I guess we'll have to film later. Time for a coffee break. I take a lot of breaks when I'm gardening because my back gets tired. And of course, as soon as I take a break, all the noisy machines shut off. Hey ladies. So 
so relaxing. Peace and quiet. So I decided I am going to plant most of my squash seedlings that I showed you last week how terrible they look. Pretty confident that they will recover. So yeah, some things I might plant a seed, like the cucumbers don't look good, so I might just plant cu cucumber seeds. Um, the other stuff, I'll actually plant the seedlings. Then I also have this tray of flowers. It's called borage. I've never grown it before, but it's ready to get planted. Look how big they are. Um, but I guess they are, they get pretty tall and big and bushy, but they attract a lot of like butterflies and pollinators. So they're good to plant with your crops that need pollinators so that they set fruit like my squash. This is also an example of intercropping, is these borage plants, they get tall and bushy and big, and the squash will stay low. So they, they pair well together because the squash will crawl along the ground, and the borage will come up in between and be all beautiful and big and taking up its own space. Okay. So how you plant into this landscape fabric is you just measure where you want your plant and you just cut an X. That gives you enough space. carefully tuck them in. Last week or a week and a half ago, Tim found a cardinal nest with eggs in it. Um, just accidentally because he startled the mom bird and it flew out of the bush. So he looked in there and saw the nest with eggs and they were so cute, little brown eggs with brown speckles. Um, he took a picture, maybe I can insert it. But I just checked the nest and there's little babies. Little cardinal babies. They're like brand new. Such big moths. That was exciting. I'm gonna leave them be now so their mom comes back. 